Alright, so this is the paint material from the last uh, tutorial and uh, we will reuse the mask of this paint in order to make our rust material. Okay, so this greater than node is the mask. However, we will not use this node in the, the in making the mask for the rust. So we will copy this section. I mean, we will keep this section. Okay, move this up here and this mask move down here. All right, and uh, now we will delete everything else. And uh, yeah, delete. Here we go. So this is the mask from the paint material. So we will not touch this until the later part of this video. For now, let's forget about it. Alright, so let's create another space warp node. Now, if you have not watched the paint material, then I suggest you watch that one before this one because uh, we have this uh, space warp node and uh, you, you have to watch that paint material in order to know how to create this node. Okay, I'll leave the link in the description. So connect the uh, generator texture coordinate into the uh, space warp. Now, however, uh, the the generated texture coordinate is a bit stretched on the z dimension because um, this model is um, three meter high and uh, two meter for x and y dimension. So the texture is going to be stretched a bit on the z dimension. Now I don't want it to be stretched, so I'm going to use the object texture coordinate instead. Now the object texture coordinate depends much on the scale of uh, the model, and uh, this model is very big, so the numbers that I will be setting for this um, particular material will only work for this size of the model. If you are working on a smaller model, you might have to change the scale a little. Okay, so, yeah, let's begin. So this is the um, uh, space warp, and increase the strength a little, maybe decrease it, and make it a little bigger, like so, and increase the details a bit, maybe like that. Alright, so this is the default uh, space warp technique, and we will change this, the space warp technique a little bit, uh, for another space warp, okay, and for the second space warp, we will only warp al along the z dimension, so uh, this one will not work. So we need to create a custom space warp node network, okay? So create a vector mapping node and connect this one over, and scale the z dimension to something like 0 0.05, okay? This will scale the whole space along the z dimension. And uh, we will create a noise texture, like so. You can see that the noise is very much stretched along the z dimension. So we will increase the uh, the scale of the noise a bit, maybe a bit more. This is not small enough, and uh, maybe this much. So you can see this uh, this is a very um, directional kind of texture, and the orientation of your model is also important because if you rotate the model uh, you can see that the uh, you can see that the the texture kind of rotate with it so let me s reset the origin to geometry and there we go you can see that the orientation of the texture will rotate with the uh, 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 model so the orientation of your model is quite important, okay? So I want this uh, texture to be vertical, okay? Not something like this. So I have to, I will have to make sure that the rotation is all set to zero and uh, stretch this along the z-axis, okay? So now we will create a map node and subtract this by 0 0.5 and multiply this with a weight of maybe 0.1 okay and finally we will add this with the uh, space warp node there we go now we have something like this okay so first we warp the space uh, using the old uh, space warp node 
and then we go up again using this for these four nodes which uh, only warps along the z dimension and I think there is actually something wrong about this and I actually forgot to put down a combined xyz node so we will only warp along the z axis and the x and y axis remain as zero okay so now let's test this one out so you can see that this distort the the checker pattern like this and if you test out your material and it does not look like this then you must have messed up something and uh, you should go back and find out where you messed up before moving on with the video okay so it's beginning to rain outside my my office so you may hear some rain noise in this video so anyway let's continue get rid of the checker pattern and create a, a noise texture here we go and the noise texture should look like this okay maybe we should increase the strength a, mo a little bit more or maybe not yeah, just leave it as is for now now this noise is already looking very interesting and uh, it looks very much like rust however this is not enough details for the rust because the rust is much more complex than this so this noise alone is not enough however you can see that the noise texture does produce a color output and we can create a separate RGB node and see the, the, the different channels of the noise and you can see the red channel is actually the factor output of the noise and the green and blue channels are actually just different noise just different randomness so we will combine these three channels to achieve a higher kind of details for our rust. So create a color ramp node, put the green channel in there, and uh, increase the contrast like so, and uh, increase the contrast until you have something almost sharp, so maybe something like that. Okay, and create a uh, mix RGB node like so and put this color ramp node into the factor and put the red into color 1 and put the green to color 2 there we go and this is what we have right now this is the combine of uh, red and green and this is just the red channel this is combination there we go this is much more interesting yes so with only the red channel you can see kind of the, the values kind of transit from dark to bright but with this additional mix, uh, we can see you can see in some regions of uh, the texture, the values go directly from dark to bright without going through the uh, middle gray. Okay, so we will use the same technique for this uh, for the blue channel. Okay, so copy this uh, these two nodes and connect the blue channel into the color ramp and uh, this time move the two keys a bit to the right so we have more black and less white uh, maybe move a little more there we go and uh, move this one up here and connect the color of the mix to uh, color one and connect the blue channel to color two there we go and uh, now we have something like this okay now this is still not enough details and we need to add even more details to it so so copy this uh, vector this base warp node and connect the, the vector to it and uh, let's see the size of it increase the scale a bit more maybe like that okay and uh, this time create a Voronoi texture and let's see the distance okay increase the scale a bit maybe yeah maybe like this maybe decrease the strength of the distortion maybe not okay let's leave it that way okay now create a math node and change the operation to uh, power and power by 2 uh, this will increase the contrast of the uh, Voronoi texture now this is uh, pretty much similar to the uh, RGB curve and uh, 
the RGB curve actually produces a very similar result. Okay, but this node is too big and to it, it kind of blocked the way a lot. So I'll just use a simple power node. Okay, now create a color ramp node and connect the power to it and move the black key on t a bit to the right and move the white key all the way to the left like so. Now we have this uh, very nice cloudy looking uh, tester. Okay. Alright, now create another math node and multiply this by maybe 0 0.1 or maybe 1, 2. Yeah, that will do. Now bring this one over here and copy the math node, connect the two uh, nodes like this and change the operation to subtract. So this will mm, subtract some values from the uh, uh, noise to create something like this. Okay, This is before and this is after. Okay, So now we have very nice looking patterns which has a lot of details. Okay, And uh, now it is time to start making the colors. So create a co converter color ramp node and uh, now we can set the color however we like. So maybe change this one to uh, some bright yellowish kind of color and this one set to dark red and add some more nodes in the middle and change some random color like so maybe and another one here. This one may be brighter and more saturated, like so. And uh, just uh, basically, this is just uh, some random colors. And you can tweak this however you like. And then the notes that I am creating here is uh, not exactly the same as the notes that I have created during my experiment, but uh, it should give somewhat the same result. maybe something very red alright so now it is time to connect this to the color of the connect this to the color of the um, uh, let's rename this to rust there we go and uh, let's see what's going on we should decrease the specular to maybe 0.1 and increase the uh, roughness to something very high and there we go, we have something that looks uh, pretty much like rust already. Now let's create a bump uh, node and connect this one to the height and uh, move the bump node over here and connect it to the output. Now the bump is a little too strong so let's uh, tweak the values for the bump. There we go. Now this does not look like rust, so we need to tweak the colors a little. Now this is just a matter of tweaking the color ramp, so I'm gonna leave this one as is right now. Next, uh, let's go ahead and uh, use the mask, this one, okay. So we will bring the mask over here and connect the mask to the factor of uh, of the mix, like so, and uh, maybe reposition uh, reposition our notes a little. Bring this group a bit back, like so, and uh, create a multiply node and multiply this mask with the 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 height to get something like this, and so the bump look like this. Uh, not subtract, multiply, there we go and uh, now we only have bumps on the part where there are rusts okay so this is what we have right now so let's create a glossy material and put it in here like so now we have something like this this is already looking very much like rust alright so now let's tweak the mask a little Maybe low this, lower this one to 5 so that we have a sharper transition from 
from uh, uh, from rust to metal okay and uh, maybe increase the amount of it there we go now you can actually change this one to a Voronoi for a more believable result so change this one to Voronoi okay connect the vector in and uh, connect this distance to the value input of the map range node and get rid of the noise okay increase the uh, strength I mean decrease the the scale a bit we want to have a slightly bigger Voronoi texture maybe invert it color invert there we go and uh, let's increase the strength of the distortion and also decrease the scale a bit there we go now we have a much more believable mask and uh, it looks like a, a very rusty statue right and uh, I think the transition is a bit too sharp so maybe the original 10 is good enough I think the transition has something weird going on so you can see that let's preview the mask so the transition is not in a linear way and you can see we have uh, the metal slowly become rusty and suddenly over here we can see a very sharp transition to rust while it shouldn't be like that it should it should transit from uh, metal to rust in a linear fashion okay so this mask is not linear it is linear but uh, our eyes don't see it don't see light that way so we need to uh, somehow edit this mask maybe increase the um, brightness of the mask a bit like so now we have a nice uh, smooth transition from metal to rust alright it looks uh, pretty nice so you can continue to uh, tweak the color ramp uh, over here to uh, uh, further increase the, the credibility of uh, the rust alright the rust material is now complete and uh, I hope you find it useful in your future and with that, I'd like to end this uh, video, and I'll see you next time.